Hello. Do you know usually those of us that extract impacted wisdom teeth think of maxillary impacted wisdom teeth kind of as an aside, as easy extractions, because the bone is softer and usually they'll just roll out. These are a couple of maxillary wisdom teeth that were very difficult. They were planted up against the teeth in front of them. They were fully formed roots. This young man was about 20 something. So when the roots are fully formed, it makes everything more difficult. You'd normally like to extract an impacted wisdom tooth when the root is about 25% formed. That keeps the tooth from spinning both upper and lower and the roots not wedged in against the bone up here so you can roll it out of there. The other thing that made it difficult with this tooth was finding a purchase point here that you could place an elevator and elevate the tooth. This is the other one and it was even higher but see how it's just planted against this tooth and so to elevate it you'd like to get down to here and the root was completely formed so getting access here it was so tight against the tooth in front that it was difficult place an instrument in that space and elevate the tooth. So bottom line with wisdom tooth extraction, if they're impacted is, you'd really like to extract the wisdom teeth. It's not so much the age of the patient. She's usually going to be 16 to 18, but you only want about 25% of the root formed so they're easier to extract. This patient's sedated intravenously and I'm giving painless and profound local anesthesia. We're also extracting the mandibular teeth. Now, when you're extracting a tooth, be sure to watch this video on painless and profound local anesthesia. If you're doing endo on a tooth, if you're extracting a tooth, you must give an intraligamental. Now, here's a hot tip. If you use something with vasoconstrictor in it, like one to, uh, lidocaine 1 to 100,000, and you inject intraligamentally, you're probably going to get an ulcer right there on the gingival tissue. If you sit and nest 4% plain without vasoconstrictor, you're not going to get an ulcer but you have to use an intraligamental injection if you're extracting the tooth or if you're doing endo or something that's of consequence. If you don't, the patient's going to feel it and they're not going to like you. So learn how to give painless and profound local anesthesia. So this is the upper left one, making vertical incision. And I've placed an interligamental local anesthesia. See though the problem if the tooth is, com if the roots are completely formed is to elevate it. You've got to elevate it into the bone behind the tooth and there's so much of the root of the tooth on the root of the second molar that it's hard to get it up and out. Especially if it's just plastered against the tooth in front of it. See I'm trying to get this elevator between the third molar and the second molar, and it's just so tight, I can't get it in there. Now what I'm doing with this long shank round bar, I'm actually cutting into the third molar because I'm going to lose that tooth anyway. Just trying to gain a purchase point at about the CEJ. So I've got a place to elevate. If you're right at the top of the tooth in the coronal part, right at the occlusal, occlusal line, that's probably not enough of a purchase point to elevate one of these that's plastered to the tooth in front of it and has fully formed roots. These were just unusual, unusually difficult maxillary impacted wisdom teeth. Now I'm trying to place the 301 and elevate it and it's just not budging. So you've got to have a little space distal to the tooth to elevate it into. Usually you don't have to have that space with a maxillary wisdom tooth though because that bone in the maxillary posterior region is soft enough you can just elevate it through the bone. Now what I'm doing is trying to cut a hole into the tooth and use this instrument to torque it.
You want to be sure you don't cut into the second molar. Everything on the left side, if you're right-handed, is harder than the right side because you're it's an awkward angle. Plus, it's a tight space up there. So what I'm trying to do is gain a purchase point at about the CEJ so I can e get an elevator in there and elevate that tooth. Again, this is the periodontal elevator. And then I'm using the 301, trying to go up and out. Be sure you've got a two by two in the mouth in case that tooth just popped out, the patient won't aspirate it. Here it comes, finally. You see the roots are fully formed and they're dilacerated and that's a, just a big mass to be elevating. Usually, when I was in my surgery fellowship for two years at Baylor Dental School, the thought was you take out wisdom teeth up, impacted wisdom teeth up to the age of 35. Past 35, you just watch them radiographically. This young man was about 20. So I'm removing the follicular sac, suturing with 3-0 gut suture. So remember, these surgical videos are not meant to teach somebody from dirt how to do surgery. Uh, I think it's tricky if you're trying to learn everything from these videos. In my opinion, if you're doing surgery, unless you have some significant surgical background, you need some hands-on training to do surgery. These are to enhance your technique if you've already got surgical back hands-on training. Now we're going to the right and see it's the same thing, although it may be harder because you see it's just completely plastered to the tooth in front of it and the root is fully formed. Again, a vertical incision, then cutting horizontally distal to the second molar. and I'm reflecting here, and then I'm gonna reflect here so I can, I've got some access to the coronal part of the tooth down to the CEJ. Usually you can place a periodontal elevator or a 301 back there and just elevate, and the impacted maxillary third molar would just roll out. That was not the case with these. They were really, really impacted. Another elevator, this POTS elevator, trying to gain access. It was just so tight, there was no place for the, between the mesial of the third molar and the distal of the second molar for access. Again, being really careful not to touch the second molar. Anything I'm cutting, I'm cutting into the third molar. Now here's another hot tip. Whenever you're working back here on either side, I like to use a tooth rest, a bite block. You don't want a tall bite block or the patient's open so wide you can't get to it. You either want no bite block or just a small one. So you don't want a wide bite block on the left side when you're working back here on the right. And the same thing, you can see the wisdom tooth right here. Same thing if you're on the left, you don't want a big bite block on the right side. I'm trying to just remove some tooth structures so I've got access and can elevate the tooth. Going back with the POTS elevator, trying to gain access and it's just a tight squeeze. Having a fabulous assistant is just invaluable in these situations. Luisa has been with me for 28 years. Who's my chair side right now. Pam is tapering back and she's been with me over 40 years, but both of them are like having another dentist working with you, well-trained dentist working with you. So trying to elevate with the 301.
this is a straight handpiece with a 331 trying to make a hole in the wisdom tooth put the point in there and just elevate it this has got a tip on it sometimes you can just elevate them out of there that bone was just surprisingly dense in the maxillary posterior area usually it's not that hard you see the tooth those fully formed roots though make wisdom teeth impacted wisdom teeth twice as hard as they would normally be seeing the tip that root so long it's wedging against the apical part of the second molar and so it just and then the bone distal to the coronal part of the wisdom tooth and so it's just in a bind you've got to create some space so you can get it up and out There we go. Be sure you're blocked. Look at the dilaceration on those roots, just like the horns of a deer. So not bad parenting, but I'd not seen this gentleman as a patient until the new patient exam at this age. So if he'd been a patient in my practice, we would have started watching those wisdom teeth when he was about 16 and picked the time when the root of the tooth is only about 25% formed. That's the Dental Minute. These techniques work and they work every time. It's time. It is time to take your dentistry practice to the next level and you know it. You just haven't known how to do it until right now. That's where DentistryMasterClasses.com steps in. At DentistryMasterClasses.com, Dr. Cutbreath is offering you his greatest work and his best cases. Here's everything that you're going to get when you subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com. Incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos, an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, and Dentistry Masterclasses comprehensive cases for study and reference, and you're going to get before and after photos of Dr. Cutbreath's fantastic restored work. So, great deal. 40 bucks, that is it. For 40 bucks, you're gonna get all of this. So go right now to dentistrymasterclasses.com and subscribe today and change your life, change your practice.